Hello and welcome everyone to Women Speakers Association's WSA TV. I'm Laura Rubenstein, your host and producer. And guess what today we're talking about? It's about, have you ever felt like you're in a box? or stuck, or something's just not right. And you really know you can blossom. You can get, there's somewhere else to go and, and you just don't know how. Well, that's a really important thing to know, to have some guidance. And you're in luck today because I've got some great experts here from Women Speakers Association who will help you go the distance, shall, as we say, <laughs> and get on, uh, get on board and get on board with your life, your vision, your goals. So I would like to go around and introduce you to everyone. And first up is Karen Marie. Hi, Karen Marie. Hi, Laura. I'm Karen Marie Dion. I am an author of Out of the Orchard, The True Story of Me, and the upcoming book, Into the Wilderness, being published by WSA Publishing. I'm also a speaker and a coach. Great to have you here. And let's say hi to Karma. Hi, Karma. Hi, Laura. This is Karma Spence, and I am a legacy creation mentor and the author of the award-winning book, Public Speaking Superpowers. You can find me at karmaspence.com, and today I'm calling in from Long Beach, California. Awesome to have you here, and hi, Kristen. Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Martinez. I'm calling in from Houston, Texas. I'm an inspirational speaker, an author, and a life coach, and I'm the author of 52 Weeks of Worthiness. Awesome. Wonderful to have you here, Kristen. And Maria. Hi, Maria. Hi, thanks, Laura. I am Maria Condi calling in from Vancouver, Canada, and I am a coach, speaker, and author of Morning Magic. It's a gratitude and success journal, and I can be reached at mariacondi.com. Wonderful to have you. And hi, Linda. Hi, Laura. I'm Linda Thompson. I'm an mm. author, speaker, and life coach, and I would, um, you can reach me at Linda Thompson 227 G at gmail.com. Linda Thompson 227 at gmail.com. And I'm called, I'm from North Carolina. Wonderful. It's great to have all of you here today. I want to jump right into our topic about blossoming your life. If you're feeling in a box um, and you all have such great wisdom, let's go right to Karen, Karen Marie and talk about what, what advice do you have for our viewers today on how can they go from feeling like they're in a box to blossoming? Well, first of all, I think we have to recognize that there are many different reasons why we can feel stuck or like we're boxed in. And, and the first step would be to sort of look at our lives, look at our attitudes and figure out honestly with ourselves, why am I in a box right now? And then second, I think it's important to remind ourselves of our potential. Um, you have to stop and reflect on the potential that you have within you and then also nurture your own ability to get on the, the grow, so to speak, toward blossoming, nurture your dreams, set some achievable goals, and then along the way, look at the beauty around you and stay grateful. Gratitude mm -hmm. has a way of attracting all of the good things that we're looking for and bringing those things into our lives, helping us to blossom. Oh, gratitude feels so good, doesn't it? It's awesome. Thank you for that, Karen Marie. And Karma, I wanted to hear from you about what advice do you have about how we get out of this box and blossom? Well, first, I think you should imagine what it would be like, like your most amazing vision of what it would be like to be outside of this box. And it, this vision can be a little bit scary, but don't worry because you're not going to leap from where you are to there. You're going to take baby steps. But in order to take those baby steps, you need to know where you're going. So create that amazing vision and then just start taking baby steps toward it because each baby step will get you closer and will make the next baby step easier. So if you have a gratitude, you understand what the baby steps are. Oh, we keep getting this blossoming thing going. I'm, I'm feeling it. All right. So Kristen, what advice do you have? I would say to feel like you're stepping out of the box and not make it so scary, go back to your core values, who you really are. Be true to yourself and let those core values that those beliefs and those core values that you have hold true to yourself, let that come out and be authentic. Be who you are and accept the, all the differences and all the quirkiness that you have because that's what makes you who you are. Let that shine and let yourself just be the best you that you can be. Wow, core value. Okay, so I'm... I'm practicing gratitude. I'm breaking it down into small steps and I'm 
I know my core values. Hmm, this is sounding pretty powerful. So Maria, how can we add to this getting from the box that we might feel ourselves in, whether we think about that consciously or not, but we know there's somewhere better and bigger for us. Yeah. And I, I agree fully with all these other ladies too. It's I practice all of those things myself, but I, and I really believe in taking the small steps. I love when people have a grand vision, but sometimes when we take that big step out, we can kind of crash, right? If we kind of bitten off too much before we can take that leap. So I like building on small successes and taking it just one step at a time and building on it. And it like, you know, it's like the flower opening up sort of thing, one petal at a time. And you, we're aiming to go the long haul, not just for a, you know, the immediate moment of doing something major. You need to think long-term in your vision. Love that. Um, yes, we've got to, you know, break it down and think about it for the long haul. Oh, wow. Okay. So we're, we're blossoming and, and round us all out here, Linda. <laughs> well, how can people get out of their box and blossom? It's one of the things that we, one of the things that keeps us in the box is wanting to quit or feeling overwhelmed. But what we need to do is to imagine now to acknowledge number one, that we were stuck. In, in a rut or we burnt out, acknowledge that. And then we need to make a decision that I want something better. Um, there's more to life than this and set goals and, and have a dream. And like the other um, lady said, see yourself doing it. Let's envision ourselves better, happier, not overwhelmed and, and have some, some sort of balance. Balance will help us um, when we feeling like we're stuck. So get ba goals, balance, make a decision that I want something better. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. We are like the dream team for blossoming. Can you, can you see this? I'm putting all of us on screen here because I just, I just think we got a whole robust, you know, agenda basically to blossom, be grateful, starting out with that gratitude. And also then ending with Linda, it's also in the beginning, don't quit, don't give up. You you can only blossom if you don't give up, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But you need to acknowledge that you might be scared, you might be stuck, you might be in a box, okay? Because the minute you do that, you're free. You're free. You open the box to do exactly what Karma and Kristen said and Maria said also, which was take those steps, break it down, know your core values, know who you are, right? And then build on it. And remember, you're in this for the long haul. It's not about what happens today. Today is, is what you should be uh, allowing yourself to experience, but it's for some place you wanna grow into this like beautiful rose. So thank you for the motivation and the inspiration for all this. I wanna learn a little bit more about each of you and your expertise. So let's go around and Karen Marie, tell us about who you are uh, who do you work with and what do you do with them? Okay, right now I'm, I'm doing several things. Um, I actually have an award-winning bed and breakfast in Vermont. So we're just coming off of our very busy fall tourism season. Uh, and so when that happens and it's not as busy anymore, then I do consulting. And I, I do consulting and I that's when I primarily do my writing, write my book. Um, in the past, I've worked with government, civic, faith, um, community groups, nonprofits, to help them to um, increase their ability to grow and thrive, um, to enhance communication and, and help them to develop the leaders within them um, as well as around them. So, um, but because of life circumstances, uh, everyone encouraged me to write my story, uh, which I thought no one would read, but everyone told me it was stranger than fiction. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it and uh, it's opened up a whole new audience for me of um, people that to interact with. And I find myself more and more leaning toward coaching people who have also been through hard times and who maybe are having trouble getting out of the box. Um, I know what it's like to be in the box and I know what it's like to get out of the box. And sometimes you need a cheerleader who's been there before you. And so I find myself working more and more with people like that now. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And do you want to just give us a little hint into your story of how you got to become this consultant in this consultant and author role? Sure. Well, I actually was a consultant for about 15 years. 
um, doing the leadership training and development communication enhancement. And what I learned through all of that and what I taught through all of that was how people tend to see themselves in one frame of reference. Oh, I'm a type A or I am a perfectionist or whatever descriptive they might use about themselves. But um, what I wanted to sort of help them to see is that they're not in a proverbial box like we're talking about, that behavior is dynamic and that it's a choice. And so um, I started out by helping people to see the choices that they had and worked with many, many organizations for all those years and sort of now I'm, I'm getting into a little bit more personal uh, work because when you bear your soul, <laughs> it's quite a vulnerable thing, but it also opens people up to open up to you. Beautiful. And we know we have uh, your book launching on November 1st. Is that right? Yes. So we'll be back with you on November 1st through WSA Publishing. Congratulations. Let's go over to Karma. Karma, tell us a little bit about your um, who you work with, what you do, and maybe a story about how you came to this work or a client. Sure. I help women introverts and shy people unleash their content creation superpowers and communicate their message with confidence so that they can create a fulfilling and meaningful legacy. And the reason why I chose to work with introverts is because I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing research on my latest book, Public Speaking Superpowers, I kept hearing over and over and over again that introverts would find it hard to be a speaker. And I know from personal experience that is absolutely not true. But I expand beyond speaking because I'm also a writer. I've been writing since I was four years old. I self-identify as a writer. <laughs> and so I know how intimidating writing a book can be, but it's really not that hard. So I help people get over their fear of speaking, over their fear of writing, and get their message out into the world because it is that message that creates their legacy. And do you have a story about how you help someone? I'm still working on that one. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. I love that you are an introvert. And I totally agree that introverts are, are. it's not that they don't want to be out there in the world. It's they have different concerns. And thank you so much for the work you do about that. And I'd love to go over to uh, Kristen now and ask you about who do you work with? What's your expertise? And, you know, what do you love doing with them? And uh, maybe you have a story about how you came to this work or how you help someone. Sure. Well, I work with women primarily who are in a cycle, I would say, of compromising their beliefs or their values because they have a low self-esteem. And I say that um, we really, we can have be self-assured and know that we're loved and accepted, but we still have those days when we look into a mirror and we have a lot of self-doubt. So I like to work with women and let them know that they have an inherent value placed in them that cannot be taken away no matter what happens around. And part of the process of me um, doing this, talking to women about their worthiness, because I lived a lot of my life not knowing my real value. And I honestly, you know, lived a life trying to please others and lost myself a lot of times in the process. And it was when I went through a transformational time in my life and I realized that I had a lot, um, a lot to offer and just by being myself that I thought, you know, I need to share this with others. There's other people that are going through that. And so I really enjoy, I do um, speaking to women at retreats or small groups or conferences, but I really enjoy the one-on-one -on -one coaching because there's a lot of you know, you get to know a person that way and get to see a lot of growth that way. And just like these all of these other women have shared, it's nice to see the process of someone coming through that. And I think uh, my favorite story is of a client that was really like me. And that's why it's so close to my heart, because I met a woman who had lost her husband and um, was in a time of her life that really was trying to define what she who she was and realized that she had kind of lost herself along the way. So we just kind of started back with core values and thinking about what does she like to do? And as a result, after, you know, some time, she is back stronger than ever and has actually found new work and new volunteer activities. So it's really neat to see that happen. 
Wow. Thank you for sharing your story of transformation and um, how you helped others too. And the intimacy of doing retreats is really special. So uh, it's, it's great work. And um, Maria, let's talk about you. How did you, let's see, who do you work with? What do you do? And tell us a story about either how you came to this work or how you help someone. Yes, of course. Thank you. I work with uh, women that are very purpose driven. Um, often they're coming to me a little bit burnt out. They're trying to find a new path in their life per se. You know, they're, they've done a whole bunch. They probably raised their kids. They've looked after everybody else but themselves. And now it's their time to, you know, reinvent themselves a bit. And I came to that mostly through, I'm a CPA. I've done that for 32 years, which I retired from earlier this year. And about 10 years ago, I became a life and health coach. So I crossed the two over quite a bit in my leadership uh, work in the corporate world, I would coach people also because they were, you know, they're trying to be a leader, but they don't even want to be there. <laughs> they want to do something completely different. That's their passion, right? So that's sort of how it naturally came about. And, you know, I do that through courses and one-on-one -on -one and uh, I'm just starting a new membership right now on self-care because I'm finding that's a really big missing piece. Um, and uh, that's how it's all come to be. And I, I, I think it's great. And we talked about self-care and that's also a piece that I think, Linda, you kind of talked about, uh, which was like the balance, having balance mm -hmm. in your life, bringing that back. And I think it's really important if you really want to blossom, work with someone like any one of these ladies here <laughs> and uh, bring that balance back into your life. So speaking of Linda, Linda, let's go over to you and, yeah. and talk about who do you work with and what do you do with them in the story? Okay, my story is I just retired last year after 27 years of public health, being a public health social worker. I love my job. I love teaching um, ladies and individuals to, to be their best self and to reinvent themselves and to have goals and, and dreams, to dream big. So when I retired last year, at, before I retired, I was also um, studying to be a life a life coach and a health coach. And what I did, I um, want to continue that after I retired. So I do um, workshops with teaching and empowering, talking about self-esteem and, and dreaming big and reinventing yourself because I know what it feels like to be burnt out, to be overwhelmed and forget about yourself and stop loving on yourself. So a lot of people that I talk to, I'm, it's kind of like a reflection in the mirror. I'm like, been there, done that. I know there's help and together we can do this. So that's, that's um, one of the things I love to do and, uh, with the coaching and, and the speaking and the teaching, the workshop. It brings joy to me and it also helps change lives. And I love changing lives and speaking positive over your situation. And that's why I published the book, Speak Positive, and expect the victory words of wisdom. And inside this book, is, it um, reflects on different situations where we can be positive, think positive, and bring that balance to our lives. Beautiful. I love what you just said earlier. Start loving on yourself. I think if that's if there's one takeaway from this show, I think all agree that it's start loving on yourself. Give us a thumbs up if you like that, like that one, everyone. And um, so, yeah. <laughs> That's great. And I'm, I'm especially excited about the people watching here today because you're getting such wisdom from our, our experts. And I wanted to wrap up with a little bit about Women Speakers Association because that's what we do. We bring experts together to co collaborate, to, co to convene, to support each other. And I wanted to hear from each of you about what is the biggest value you're getting from Women Speakers Association because we do everything from helping you get booked, get seen, get paid, and blossom, right? So uh, Karen Marie, why don't we start with you? Well, I haven't had the opportunity to take advantage of too much because I've been busy taking advantage of the publishing opportunity. <laughs> so in terms of networking, I haven't done as much as I would like yet, but I'm looking forward to doing a whole lot more networking through Women's Speakers Association and um, just really appreciate the relationships that I'm developing on the publishing end of things now and the expertise and the wisdom that's being shared with me. Um, this is my second book 
And uh, it's a whole different approach than uh, the first book uh, publication. And I'm really appreciating and respecting that value very much. Beautiful. And we love that you've been doing the publishing. And that's a huge thing you're taking advantage of with the Women Speakers Association. Our publishing is quite unique. We give a lot of support and uh, we get you to get your book out there. If not your own book, you can be a part of the collaborative book, which we have the Voices of the 21st Century. I know, Karma, you're a part of. So, Karma, tell us what the value of Women Speakers Association <laughs> has been for you so far. <laughs> well, there's actually three things. One is being connected to the speaking world because being an introvert and a writer i can get really insular and connected into my writing and just forget about the speaking and this keeps me remind me oh yes i'm a speaker too <laughs> <laughs> then there's of course the being connected to such wonderful women as on this show and the other wsa members and of course there's the publishing opportunity it was really awesome being a part of voices of the 21st century Beautiful. Well, thank you for going all for it. That's great. And uh, Kristen, why don't you share with us the value of Women Speakers Association for you? I think the value, uh, someone mentioned it earlier, collaboration. I mean, it's just, we can't do anything alone. And, you know, as much as we try, we think we can. Wow. <laughs> what support you gain from this group. And look at today, you just pulled from everybody for one call. So it's, it's mm -hmm. great to have that collaboration. Isn't it? It's uh, it's magical what happens when women gather. I pr I personally believe, and that was what my chapter in Voices of the 21st Century was about. And I love gathering with women. So thank you for being here. And Maria, I'd love to hear about you and your experience with Women Speakers Association. Yeah, thank you. I am fairly new to it, but you know, I came to it for the connection and the community and for learning. Also, I'm a lifelong learner, so I always want to learn more. And obviously to get more exposure and to be able to have opportunities like this and um, all the connections and all, there's a lot to it actually, which is great. A lot of there is a it. lot to it. Yes. And yeah. for those of you who want to take advantage of it, go to joinwsa.com and you'll hear, you'll see some of the value, if not get a sense of how robust and deep we do go with you. So also Linda, I'd love to hear from you, the value of Women Speakers Association. Oh, it is so valuable. I really, truly love the, the networking, the collaboration, the, um, the podcast, the learning, the training, and um, everyone being accessible. It's not like, I mean, if you, when you email, somebody returns your email, if you call, you talk to someone. I just like the, um, I just like all of that and the accountability. And um, I'm in a course now with the um, making your book I'm using your book as a speaking and um, just all the course and everything is just great. Yes. I mean, that's another thing we give to you is how to build your business with your book, how to build your business with speaking. I mean, if you don't know the keys, uh, we have all that wisdom right here at Women Speakers Association. So again, that's joinwsa.com. And I can't wait to be back for another episode with you next week. And thank you, ladies, for all you've done and all you do in the world and for being a part of our collaborative network here at Women Speakers Association. We'll be back again. Thank you, everyone. Bye for now. Bye. 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 <laughs>